So, I mean, you, you got into this journalism thing, but you, journalism wasn't your profession, was it? No, it wasn't. I was in local government, retiring at the age of 50, uh, and that was due to the journalism increasing, because what happened was, uh, when I look back, <laughs> I can hardly believe it, because obviously Butler had the top sports team in the country, and many people listened. And in no time at all, I was being approached by other people. For example, sports arms. Uh, you mentioned earlier, you, Lynn was talking to Mel Hobson, and he mentioned Bob Jackson. Yeah. I used to do all the bowls coverage for the Sheffield area on BBC Radio Sheffield, BBC Radio Stoke, BBC Radio Derbyshire, BRMB. Uh, all of those came about from this initial Bowls International, World Bowls, and then of course that saw me enter the flat green scene when I was doing stuff on a regular basis with Andy Thompson, Gary Smith, Tony Alcock, Wynne Richards, Many, many people, I don't think, realise in the Midlands exactly what I have done on the flat green scene as well as the crown green scene, and with the help of many other people, of yeah, course. Yeah, I thought you've done a, a tremendous stuff for, for the sport for a long time, and we, we've been indebted to, to you, really, for what you have done. Thank you, Mark. Um, you, you spoke a lot about your, your journalism. I mean, what, what, what do you say was the eye point? I mean, you've done television commentaries and things like that. What do you think the eye point? Yeah. I think the high point... There being many actual facts because I've done stuff on Sky Central Yorkshire Television. Um, probably the high point, if I, if I think about it, was a wet, very wet click Eaton when uh, the All England took place um, with Mike Leach. Yeah, you won it, didn't you? Uh, yeah, yeah, and and I don't know what happened, but uh, um, the producer said to me, "Hasn't he got a peculiar delivery?" And I don't know what made me say it, and I said, yes, it reminds me of a drunken postman. And uh, the producer absolutely, um, you know, uh, well, he jumped out of the van, really, because he thought it was extremely funny. And then, of course, the other highlight, in a sense, was the um, Sky presentation of Waterloo, when Gareth Herbert played in that rain-soaked quarter-final, I think it was. Yeah. Um, Mike Holden, wasn't it? That's right. And they did a close-up of Mike Oldham, and he was absolutely dripping wet. And I said to John Gwynn, who was doing the commentary with me, um, probably this is the wrong time, John, to ask if he's home and dry. <laughs> and the producer in my earphone said, taxi for Mike Wakelum, please, and quick. <laughs> right. But uh, I think it's those sorts of things that perhaps when you go back to my um, initial uh, starting radio that you pick up and these are the sorts of things that producers and radio presenters that they like you know um, Crown Green Bowls is one of the mill to them so they're looking for excitement and just one thing Mel if you ask me a highlight from one of the producers and he once sent to, said to me do you know what one of the problems with your game is Mike I sit in the television van and I see players who win but look as if they've lost mm. think about it yeah. you know how many players, top players, can you see today who, when they win, they shake hands and they've got a £2,000 check? Whereas the darts, who promote it properly, it's the hand in the air I've yeah. won and we don't do it. Yeah, yeah, quite good. I mean, you spoke to me in the past about some of your frustrations that you've had as doing journalism. I mean, what really irritates you over the years? The thing that irritates me, to be quite truthful, is there are two things really. Um, I suppose sometimes it hurts an appreciation of what you do. Um, if my wife was here now, she would tell you that there have been many nights when I've climbed into bed at quarter past twelve at night. And then you think to yourself, well, do people really appreciate that? Because if they appreciated, they would do what they're doing with you tonight. They would have written to the Evening Mail or the Argus or the, um, the, the Bowles journals. I mean, for example, Warwick and Worcester won the county championship, what, the year before last. Mm. Did anybody write to the Evening Mail or the Sports Argus? So therefore, if they didn't write, how does the editor know that there's anybody interested in the columns that he's providing? Yeah. You know. Um, that frustrates me. The other thing that frustrates me is that um, people who, unlike yourself, I may say, who provide me with all the information I've done for many years, run competitions, but they forget the sponsors. And it's the people who, like me, who provide the sponsors with what they want, and that is some sort of recognition that they are promoting a competition. Mm. You know, it's far easier to not do anything. It only takes a little time. Mm. I mean, for example, Nationwide Bowler. At this moment in time, 
that that particular magazine that I write for goes to every bowls club in the country. These people have come into bowls, they are golf magazines, but I know from my discussions with them, they get nothing. Nobody writes in and says, and this is a flat green magazine mm -hmm. devoting two, three pages to Crown Green Bowl. And that's the problem with the publicity in the sport. Yeah, yeah that's right, that's right. The problem is sometimes we don't always give the sponsors value for money, do we? No, we don't. You know, no. A lot of events, that's why we've lost events, isn't it? You, know, we, we, you just take them for granted, perhaps mm -hmm. some organise you sort of take the money and run, really, don't mm -hmm. they? You know? mm -hmm. I mean, we've known instances where sponsors have not even been invited to final days. And things that's like. right. But I think the other thing you see, if you talk about sponsors, that raises another issue. How can we in the game hope to attract sponsors at national and local level when we don't even have sponsorship packages? Our governing body hasn't got a sponsorship package. So if I am the director of a large company and I'm looking to sponsor Crown Green Bowls, my first question is to the governing body, well, hang on, what am I going to get? How many bowlers have we got? Do they know? No, they don't. Um, I mean, where are the top venues? Where's the event going to be played? Can I have anything about the players? If we don't provide a sponsorship package like other sports do, I received only recently a sponsorship package from the basketball organisation. You should see it. It's absolutely amazing. And we haven't got anybody doing that. Yeah. You know. Yeah, we've, we've fought well behind a lot of sports, on not we? Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then, Mark, anyway, we'll come back to you shortly. Just to remind listeners, still to come tonight, we've got Arthur Murray and Jimmy Darby. But now, just over to Lynn, we should guess you've got a little bit of competition there. Thanks, Mel. Last weekend saw the climax of a couple of big events. The Bridlington Festival at the excellent Dukes Park was held. Yeah. Robbie Fitzpatrick defeated Paul Chamberlain 21-17 to take the £1,750 top prize in the men's event. The £800 first prize in the ladies' event went to a newcomer on the competition scene, Melanie Savile from Sheffield, beating Cynthia Tong from Doncaster in the final 21-12. Last Sunday also saw the finals of the Derek Riley Trophy at Wolfstanton, with a £1,000 top prize going to Pottery's Paul Phillips, who defeated Lee Lawton 21-13. Looking ahead, the next big event is Spring Waterloo, with the finals next Sunday, 24th of May. Some of the names in the top quality lineup include Graham Wilson, Noel Burrows, Graham Hickey, John Bancroft, Ian Nicholson, John Bailey, Simon Cope, to name a few. Should actually be a great day's bowling. It's back over to now, Mel to Mel now with further competition news. Yeah. While we're on the subject of, of the, the ladies' bowls, it's, um, you went up to Bridlington, Lynn, what did you, uh, you think of it? Um, it's a, an excellent um, event, really, uh, you know, really well, uh, well, well run um, for, for parts greens, S superb, yeah, very good. Yeah, I mean, I must, I must congratulate Jim and Kieran who did the work up there. I mean, the first time I went up there, it's a long way. I have to trek off at half past five in the morning, but the venue is absolutely superb. And um, it's certainly, for an all-England venue, to be one of the best I've ever seen. And um, hopefully the competition will be uh, going along a lot uh, again for many more years to go. I know Jim's had a, yeah, a few yeah, problems, yeah. a few dropouts. He's had a few observations made by people saying uh, what should be done, and I'm sure Jim will take them on board. And uh, any uh, anything might want ironing out, Jim will see to it. So all I say to anybody is, if you're looking for a good event next year to enter, you've not been and try Bridlington. Yeah, 